and welcome back for another Possum Stamps Christmas card making series video. Today I'm featuring the special delivery stamp set which has seven cute stamp images as well as several sentiments. We're going to create a monochromatic card. Let's jump right into our project. I am starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white piece of card stock. I'm going to tape this to the back of the stencil. Once I flip it over, it's going to help keep that in place so that I can do a little bit of ink blending. I do have Fiesta Blue from Katherine Pooler. I love this blue color. Color. I wasn't sure what direction I was headed in when I started this. I just knew that I wanted to use some stencils and, of course, the beautiful special delivery stamp set. I thought maybe I might add two colors to this, but once I got that Fiesta Blue down, I knew I wanted to go monochromatic. I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to bring in my cutting plates so you can see them. I'm going to sandwich that stencil attached to the ink blended panel and I use a rubber mat and I run it through my die cutting machine and that gives me a little bit of embossing so those snowflakes are just slightly textured and a little bit raised. I'm going to use the ink that's left on my brush and go all around the edges of this four and a quarter by five and a half inch card panel and we're going to move on to some more stenciling. For this one I should have used some pixie spray. This is the candy stripe stencil also from Possum Stamps. I turned it over and you can see that this is a well-loved stencil. I'm using that same Fiesta Blue but because those little lines are thin I do have to be very careful. There my stencil comes off so that's where that pixie spray would have come in. They do line up easily so that was easy enough. I had a dark corner and I thought, you know what, I'm going to use that to my advantage and I added just a little bit more dark in the center. So my advice when using the stencil would be to use pixie spray and also to go with the grain of the stencil so you're not fighting against it and it doesn't lift up on you. It's a beautiful stencil and I absolutely adore it as you could see by how well loved it was. Again, I have a piece of paper of white cardstock. This is actually Copic Express It. I'm going to use some anti-static powder on this because I'm going to do heat embossing. The Catherine Puller inks do work with embossing powder. They stay wet just a little bit longer. I will stamp it twice using that same Fiesta Blue. I'll bring over my coffee filter to hold any of the embossing powder that comes out of the um, little jar. I'll put it right back in and then I'll heat up my heat tool for about 30 seconds and we're going to melt that clear embossing powder. So this is going to keep with that monochromatic feel. Instead of going with black ink and using my Copic markers, I just went with that Fiesta Blue and then added that clear embossing powder and that protects my image from my Copic markers. I have uh, a very simple Copic marker coloring for you today. I'm using a BG7 and that's what I used to color the scarf. I'm using a BG5 around these edges and you can see I'm not doing any shading. I'm keeping this very simple. This would be a fairly easy card to mass produce because it really um, packs a punch. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it doesn't take a whole lot of coloring time. So I really enjoyed that portion of it. I'm going to use a B0 marker, I believe, or a B00, I, excuse me, and I'm going to color the background of the bear. I typically color my white images with C1 and C0 or C00 markers and I went a little bit too heavy handed with my C1 marker as you can see. So I am going to actually end up with more of a gray bear than a polar bear. It worked out just fine. So the bear is the only portion of this particular card that is not going to be monochromatic. So I colored him gray. 
Of course, I have to add a little bit of rosiness to his cheeks and to his ears. And then I'll come in with a black glaze pen. So here's my black glaze pen. I'm going to color in his nose black. And then I'll use my white gel pen and I'm going to add the freckles that I love so much on all of my little critters. I do not have the coordinating dies for this set, but I did use my brother Scan and Cut to cut it out. There are coordinating dies that are available, so make sure that you check the store for that. I have a piece of cardstock that I cut using one of the square dies in my stash, and then I use just the ink that was left over on my brush. I try to get as much use of that ink as I possibly can, and I just colored over it using that blending brush. Here I'm just tying a bow with some seam binding, so I'm going to have a bow on the left side of this card panel, and I really love the way that it kind of steps up the prettiness on this card. So there's that candy stripe panel. As you can see, I'm going to add the bear to the square panel, and then I'm going to place that more towards the upper middle of that candy stripe panel and I want to place my sentiment here. So I am using one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I'm going to use the same Fiesta Blue. So I'm going to stamp this three times. First I want to make sure that my image is straight so I just add a piece of plastic over the top of that candy stripe panel and I stamp it. It looks straight to me so I'm going to go ahead and go on to stamping the cardstock. Once I stamp this the third time I will do that heat embossing again. So I'm going to bring in the uh, clear embossing powder and then I'll melt it with my heat tool. The reason I stamped it three times is I wanted to get another variation of that Fiesta Blue. So of course adding the layers of that ink is going to darken it and kind of give it a little bit more contrast on that candy stripe background. I'm going to glue my bear to the square and then of course I'm going to um, center this more towards the top of this panel and then I'm going to bring in an A2 card base. So this is a top folding card base. It is four and a quarter by 11 and then I scored it at the five and a half inch mark. I'm going to add some art glitter glue to the back of this panel and I'm going to place it over the top of that card base and then we're going to add that candy cane striped base to the top of that. I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape so that I get that little bit of pop that I like. And of course I'm not going to bore you with the removal of the release paper because it does take me a little bit to remove the release paper from this particular foam tape. Now I'm going to move my bow just a little bit so that I can get this centered where I want it onto this card panel. And then I have some snowflakes over to the right. Those are from my stash. I'm going to add that to my card once I trim the ends off the bow to make sure that I get it to the length that I'm looking for. I thought it would be really pretty to add one of the snowflakes to the center of the bow, but I felt like it needed a little bit more contrast rather than just being white on white. So again, I used what was left on my brush. I am going to glue this down. I'll hold it down for just a little bit using my reverse tweezers. I'm going to place a couple of these snowflakes on and then once I figure out where I want the snowflakes, I will remove the tweezers from that bow and we're going to add a few little gems. So here's my gems. They're clear and I think that you can't see them very well in the photograph, but I do think that they add just that little bit of um, sparkle and elegance to the card that I was looking for. I'll use my smaller pieces so you can see over there I think I think my tweezers just covered it up over to the right I have some smaller star like pieces and I'm just going to add them to the tops of those snowflakes I will offset them so where the arms of the larger snowflake are I'm going to make sure that those smaller snowflakes go in between each of the arms 
if that makes sense, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So here is the first one, and I'm going to go through and do the same thing for each of the snowflakes. I will then add those gemstones, and that will be my finished card for today. I hope you're enjoying this Christmas card series. I know that I have been inspired. If you haven't uh, went over to the Possum Stamps blog, it's linked in the description box below. I've mentioned this before. We have amazing designers on this team, so make sure to check out our Instagram, check out the blog, and we want to thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, we would absolutely love for you to subscribe. Ring the bell so that you're notified whenever we do upload a video. And of course, we always appreciate a thumbs up and any comments that you leave for us. So once I finish with these gemstones, that's going to finish it as I said. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me.